Alright, what is going on guys? Chili Games. Welcome back to the channel. Here I'm featuring the Akazuki, a ship that I haven't featured on this channel yet. <laughs> I'm kidding! This is the third video in a row that we have done the Akazuki. I do realize that. Um, to be honest, I haven't played much in between the span of these couple videos, so this was just a video that I had. And I was like, dude, it's just... When you play games and things just happen, it's like, I can't not use this. Anyways, uh, this ship is just so much fun. Uh, if you do also watch a lot of my content, you know I love to play Fletcher, all these kinds of things. So it's not a surprise that I like this gunboat, even though it can be killed pretty easily sometimes. But this game uh, really, really shows off the power that it can do versus... Um, more heavily armored targets, especially like using the guns to get rid of like battleships, um, all that kind of stuff. So what are we doing? We are doing something that I honestly hate doing on this map um, because this spawn out here can be so dead. And by the time you look back around to B, you know you run the risk of your whole entire team being basically dead. That basically happens here, and we're not the fastest destroyer ever. I mean, look at we're, we're maxing out speed boost, going straight forward in a straight line at 37 knots, which is horrendous. But you know, I didn't want to play B because every time I play thing, you can just get if you get spotted, uh, it can be difficult to turn around. You don't want to take a lot of like damage really early on, and so I was like, you know what? We'll play the flank. We'll go secure A, uh, whatever. We automatically lose a Udachi. I feel like that's that's such a standard in, in gameplay these days. Like it, every single game starts off with a some sort of devastating strike from Udachi. I mean, you guys play the same game I do. I don't know if it's different for you guys, but it's just you know it's it's par for the course. So taking a pretty big risk here, but that Baltimore is going to be my biggest counter going into this. Uh, we aren't spotted, so I get a little bit more confident, and I'm like, okay. If I have to 1v1 this Baltimore in bad circumstances, I'm going to want him to be as low health as possible. So while I have the chance, I'm going to do as much damage as I can while I am unspotted. So, you know, if we were ever forced to kill this guy later in the game, I have squeaked off damage here and there every chance that I can so that he's lower health in any situations. Uh, and this game is also about uh, this friendly Richelieu here. Uh, and this is just a just a standard solo game, and it is very rare that you see really good teamwork, but I was pinging targets, ones that were very, like, uh, detrimental to me, aka the Baltimore. He takes a nice shot, so no, thank you. That is such a huge play, because now it allows me to just blitz this ACAP. I know there's really no other cruiser in this game that can really provide as many, you know, obstacles as a radar cruiser especially for this thing because getting radar once can be absolutely just devastating to your health I mean it's just if you get stuck in a radar and you're not turned around you're not ready for it it is it is death in this thing so the next thing we noticed is that there is actually a smoke screen right there so that immediately tells us okay there's a destroyer there and from looking at the rate of fire that we saw earlier that is the enemy Akazuki and honestly, you trading Akazuki versus Akazuki can be really bad for both parties. Um, and that's what I was worried about. If I can kill this guy, full health versus full health, that's fine. But I can guarantee that if he's ready for it, um, I'm going to lose a huge chunk of health as well. I'm spotted. That means he has really good detection, but that means I probably have more health because I'm using Sims. And so what I was doing here, I have all my guns... But I'm also trying to stay a little bit angled because I do not want to give this guy angles for his AP. So I'm somewhat angled. I'm also slowing down because I don't know if he launched torpedoes or not. But you can see the trades that we did there. He was full broadside. I was not. I, I angled. He was forced to use HE the whole time. While the HE is really, really good, if you show broadside versus broadside in a destroyer, this thing will win the AP DPM versus broadside destroyers will so incredibly beat out the HE DPM. So that really helped us in that trade there. We lost 7,000 health. He lost, with the help of a teammate, almost all of it. So I will take that trade any any single day. 
And I know they're going to play by the Richelieu here, taking advantage of the slow maneuverability of the Akazuki, knowing that the guy just used his smoke screen. I was worried that he was going to slip around to the left and we were going to kill him, but he decided to play middle. Uh, the Richelieu using the speed of his ship to, to get around, and then we're also... I was also very worried about torpedoes because uh, torpedoes are probably your biggest weakness in this thing, especially in, you know, any sort of DD brawl. Uh, a lot of destroyer players like to just not shoot their guns and shoot torps. That is very, very dangerous in this ship because it's just very hard to turn. And the cat is just chewing on a tree right now. That's fantastic. But yeah, anyways, I, I talked about the, the guns for this ship here. We're in a really good spot. Our, we're, we're capturing B. Nothing can really spot us here. And right now, we're just going to stay pretty safe and use our guns. Um, not getting the best results on the Remo. Remo is a really heavily armored target, to be honest. So it can be hard to squeak out some damage. But the Alabama is the lowest health target, so I was like, okay, let's just um, let's just try to whittle this guy down. I noticed that I wasn't getting too much with the AP, and he doesn't have a fire, so I was like, okay, this guy needs to start burning first. So I'm going to light some fires here. Unfortunately, he is pulling forward, but I'm going to try and squeak as many fires as I can and only get one. But still, that's damage that we have ticking. And... As you see the enemy battleship there, I would shot those torpedoes because I knew I I wasn't going to need torpedoes in the next minute or so. I'm not in a position to really do anything with them. So I was like, you know what, if that battleship to my left ever decides to come around that corner, might get some blind torpedoes, whatever. So right now what I'm doing is I was honestly really, really worried about the Richelieu being in the spot that he's in because he's putting himself in a crossfire and I'm like oh dude like we are heavily down on ships right now we have cap control but if you look at the points obviously it's you know it's it's looking pretty bad but another good thing about this game here is our friendly hipper that's just stuck in there does a really good job of you know just doing the best that he can even though he knows he's dead a Hipper is not a ship that you want to be rushing like this Roma. Hipper has six torpedoes per side. That is not a fun time for battleships. It is almost certainly always a death wish doing that against a Hipper. The Hipper might be on super low health, but if you let him get those torpedoes off, it can be a very bad day. Try to squeak as much damage off as I can versus this Roma. Again, as a gunboat... Um, primarily gunboat with these torpedoes. I'm not expecting to get tons of devastating strikes with the torpedoes, so our damage has to be over time. So every time I get a shot that I think I'm okay, I'm gonna take shots and try to get, just try to get every target that I can at least on fire. So that, I'm like I'm already thinking that, okay, hey, we've already lost the Hipper, and also it might be, you know, easy to assume that our Richelieu is going to go down as well. So it's like, I'm already thinking like, okay, this is like a 1v5 already. So I'm going to need a lot of targets to lose a lot of health. And honestly, I didn't even, I had no idea where that destroyer was. But luckily the Hipper does an amazing play here. I mean, just, he was dead, he was stuck in. But again, that is not a place for that you want to push a Hipper. And I know that, well, we actually kind of, cheat the kill there off of the uh the Romo with the fire so that was nice but he did Hipper played a really good job there get a, another perma fire on the Alabama again I'm in a spot that you know I'm not trying to push it too hard we have cap control I would prefer for the Richelieu to be kind of in the same spot that I am there's no real reason to push especially when it's you know 1v 1v3 over there but obviously the biggest thing I can't tell is the I believe the Wichita is still alive, which again was another huge issue for me. Wichita is just... You will you will not get anything done versus a Wichita in this thing, 1v1. It just, it just will not happen. I think he's actually dead. I can't tell, because when I record this, it makes the screen smaller. But this is what I was talking about with the AP damage. This Iowa needs to die. I thought he was going to continue straight, but he's turning in, so those torpedoes are going to miss. But just look, 
I mean, we are we're basically almost at max range here. 10 kilometers, uh, 10, 11, 11 and a half. We're we are pretty far out there, but look at the AP damage. We've already that's 10,000 damage. That's you know 15,000 damage already. Switch to the HE, trying to get some fires as well before this guy goes um, around this island here because this might be the last time I get to shoot at this guy uncontested. So I need to do as much damage as possible. We get a fire. Realize that he has the firefighter perk on so that he doesn't, he can't get two midship fires. So I'm not going to waste my time trying to get fires on the other, um, the, the front and the back. It's I apologize. But just look at the AP just melting this guy. In combination with the fire, the DPM is just insane. I think we started this at like what, like 58,000 damage, and we're just literally 10 kilometers just melting this Iowa. We didn't have to use our smoke screen. Uh, we have all of our utilities left. That's just pure guns. It is so. That is why I love this ship because these moments right here are just so, so much fun. And in combination with Togo, because I am using Togo in this, again, for the extra fire chance. Kurita is definitely the better choice, I think. But Togo is a little bit more fun. And hey, it's standard, so... If I was playing ranked and I had to use this ship, I would 100% use Kurita. But standard battles, you know, it's all about the... It's all about these 1v3 situations here. Unfortunately, the Richelieu does go down, but he, I believe during that time where we were melting that Iowa, he was... He did kill the... He did kill the Wichita, so that was that was very, very nice. Now, this is a decision that I make right here that I almost always make a mistake on, is sending Torps at a bow end target. Um, obviously, if you're shooting Torps at a bow end target at any range, you're probably less likely to hit it, as opposed to shooting at Torps uh, when you're broadside so you can connect to multiple and I shot that set there. What I really wish I would have done is waited just a little bit. Because where I'm going right now is I'm trying to... Because they're all going to funnel there. They're in a perfect place for me to take advantage of actually having a reload booster here. And being a destroyer for um, these, uh, these cross torps here. But what I want to do is get a little bit to the side here so that I have a better chance of hitting these torpedoes. Um, the Vanguard is going to be first up and I realize like, oh hey, like this guy is... This guy is, um, he is spotted right now, but that's because the height of his ship, my, I wasn't spotted in return. We get a double fire. <laughs> so again, like, the, the gunboatiness of this ship is just so, so much fun, dude. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't not say it enough. And then again, uh, we know that there's an Alabama back there as well. The only reason why I shot there is because, like, oh crap, like, I'm going to have to get damaged at some point, and if I open up and get spotted, it's just going to be a matter of time before I lose a lot of health. The reason why I wish I said I would have waited to have those torpedoes because the Vanguard wouldn't have been alert of where I was, so I could have sent two sets broadside to both of these battleships coming through, and probably would have been a little bit better results. So, the biggest thing I'm thinking here is, okay, please God, don't ram uh, the beach right now. But also, I need to stay in, in a place where I can, I can hold the lead because we, we, we are winning on points. Uh, and that was basically because we captured both of those objectives. We're heavily down on ships. It's a 1v3. Um, and again, the Alabama's almost dead. I'm like, okay. So my only goal right now, I'm looking at both of these targets. Like, where are their guns aiming at? Can I afford to shoot here? Can I afford to get spotted? And so, yes, I can. With the rate of fire here, again like perma fire immediately i probably could have switched to the ap but i know he didn't have damage gun i just need this guy to basically not cap this objective and at the position that we are in we are 100 percent safe not too much time left on the on the clock and they're not going to get b this is basically solo warrior minus one but i it is 100 percent not possible without having uh, the Richelieu, and you, you'll see, the Richelieu did very, very well. Um, I call it there, and I was like, oh, man, we, we actually, I said thank you, and then I looked at the score, and I was like, um, this might be a little bit closer than I thought I was. I was like, please, please don't look an idiot here that I call it too soon, but hey, when you can mix in the damage cons with the fires and the guns and the torpedoes, 164,000 damage, 
Um, it is just so much fun to, to farm targets, play the objective, and squeak out a win here at a 1v3. And honestly, again, props goes to this Richelieu. The hipper played very well for the circumstances that he was in. And you'll notice that I think we both... Coming up here, before I check it, I forget. I think we both get a high count confederate. Yep, high count confederate for both of us. Well played to that guy, both above 3,000 base XP. I, again, I was looking at it, I was like, dude, that was a great game from that guy. So, always great to see you guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day, night, and weekend, weekday, whatever it is for you. And thank you guys for sticking around with me. I love all of you. Y'all take it easy. Peace.